everyone, it's Catherine. Today I will be interviewing famous author Rachel Simmons, author of Enough As She Is. This book taught me a lot about myself and being a teen girl. And with the theme of self-care and being a teen girl, I think Rachel Simmons would have some interesting things to say. So let's get into the interview. Hey guys, before we get into our interview with Rachel, I just wanted to say that the way I conducted this interview was through Skype. So the audio and Rachel's talking sometimes looks a little off, um, but I hope you still understand what she has to say and I hope you enjoyed the video. So please enjoy, thank you so much. My first question is, what do you do? Well, I do a lot of things. I, I always say I have a bunch of side hustles. Um, I think probably first and foremost, I'm a teacher. So my favorite thing to do is just teach a group of people some skill that can help them make their lives better in some way. And usually that skill has to do with leadership development or self-care or increasingly something that is both about leadership development and self-care. I also write and I also direct a leadership program at Smith College. So, um, and I do a lot of traveling and public speaking where I can hopefully do some more of that teaching that I love to do. What are your self-care habits? Well, actually, um, today I meditated. So I've recently been trying to do more meditation because I'm an overthinker. Like my brain goes a million miles an hour. And when I'm anxious or insecure about something, a lot of times my mind will think that like, if I can just like keep thinking about the future and trying to control everything, that it's going to be better. But actually what that often just makes me feel is more anxious and worse. <laughs> Meditation's kind of like, trying to get out of your head, not thinking, but just instead like being completely in the present moment. How have your habits changed since you've been in high school? Well, I definitely am like way stronger than I was in high school. Like I'm fitter. Like I could, I could like beat my high school self's ass. Like, <laughs> you know, like I can lift more weights. I can run farther and faster. Like I'm in, even though I played three sports a year in high school, I'm in way better shape now. Um, I would say that when I was in high school, I kind of felt like I could do anything to my body and it would survive because in high school, I didn't really have a sense that like there were limits to anything. I was like, I'm going to live forever. When, you know, when they're a teenager, you're just like, yeah, I can survive anything. But now I think I'm just much more careful about like my taking care of myself because I, I know that there are limits. Um, I probably I probably get more sleep now than I did in high school. What do you encourage upon girls in high school? Well, first of all, I encourage, I think y'all need to have more fun. Like, try not to work as hard as you're working all the time. But, um, but, but what I really mean is that it's really important to remember that like the system that you're trying to apply to college in is so toxic. And in many ways it's rigged against like most people. Um, there's something really broken about a system that tells you that nothing you do is ever enough, but that also doesn't really tell you how to get where you want to go anyway. It's like you see these perfect people being rejected from these great schools. And so it's sort of like shrug emoji. You're like, I don't know, like, what am I supposed to do? I also just think it's like really important to be real with your friends because I think in like the age of Insta and like the pressure to be so good at everything it's kind of easy sometimes not to be real with people and tell them your struggle and I think it's super important that you have at least one person that you can be completely real with otherwise it's very hard for people to connect with you and help you if you need it um how do we catch ourselves when our self-care is lacking one of the ways to know if your self-care is lacking is just do you generally feel pretty crappy all the time like if you if you off if you're always feeling stressed if you're always feeling tired, that's a sign that your self care is off. But you can also ask somebody who loves you and knows you well too, right? Like even you asking me, tell me about your self care habits. That forces me to think about them. So if you're not sure, you could ask a really good friend or even a parent. Be like, do you think I'm taking good enough care of myself? Usually those people are going to know. It's always good to ask your friends for feedback. The people that you trust. What would you think is the most important thing for girls to practice? Gosh, that's a really good question, Catherine. I think it's important to remember why you matter aside from any external affirmation. So like, why are you enough as you are 
putting aside grades or what any what anyone else thinks of you like why do you know why you you matter and I think that when you know why you matter it then becomes a lot easier to shield yourself from some of the stress out there how has social media taken a role into our self-care well look I love social media I think the the problem is when you look when you're when you're going to social media because you're trying to answer questions about what you what other people think of you. So if you're like going on Instagram to like get some affirmation from others, for example, or Snapchat or whatever, like that's not a healthy way of using social media. If you're going on because you want to watch some YouTube videos, like and you want to lose yourself in that for a while, I think that's fine. But you shouldn't be using it to try to like figure out what other people think of you or like compare yourself to others, make yourself feel better. Um, at the expense of others because those things are going to lead to like generally unhappiness at the end of the day. My final question is, as we grow, how should our self-care habits change? Um, I think your self-care habits will always change based on what your lifestyle is like. If you have more money, then you can probably pay for more self-care. If you have less money, you're going to have like other cer- certain avenues are going to be close to you, but others will be more open to you. Self-care is always changing based on your life, but that no matter, even if you can only just do a little bit of it, it always counts. And that self-care is a really important act of self-respect. It's part of how you respect yourself. That's really good. Thank you so much for talking with me. That's all I have. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed my interview with Rachel. I really think she had some great things to say, so if you had a great takeaway from this video, please share this with anybody who you think needs to hear it. I'll see you in the next video. Thanks again. Bye guys.